Okay, hello book nerds. Uh, welcome to another Instagram live session and we have a little treat for you, obviously. Uh, we are going to discuss this book. It's called Bowlies and uh, you know, it is written by uh, this author. His name is Vikramjeet Singh Rook Rai, right here. It's a beautifully produced book and shortly, very shortly, the author will be, you know, joining us and talking about, obviously, Delhi Heritage as his Instagram handle goes and other stuff obviously I'll be asking him a lot of questions about uh, heritage of Delhi uh, especially the Baulis because this is a first uh, in a set of books perhaps there are few more to come so all those people who are interested in heritage in general they are obviously going to enjoy this. So I was telling everyone about this beautifully produced book by Niyogi obviously uh, first of all, a huge shout out to them and Trisha especially uh, for letting us do this. Vikramjeet, I mean, before we start this, I need to tell everyone about you because yours is a completely, you know, we see all these stories on uh, social media, right? But, you know, to actually, you know, uh, meet someone like that. Uh, so guys, uh, here is someone who started with the IT industry back in the day. He, he's not too old. He's young. But, you know, I'm saying back in the day because it's like early 2000s, right? So, you know, after that, you, you have been, for, you have been you know, kind of on the circuit. I mean, you know, studying about Delhi heritage and stuff. But uh, after that, he turns educator and a heritage activist. I mean, this is a path. I mean, you know, uh, who would have thought, you know, did, did you think about it? I mean, and obviously, uh, Vikramjeet uh, runs this organization called Heritage Shala. And, uh, and I feel very unlucky that I haven't been to Delhi recently and I haven't been one of those on one of those, you know, tours and walks, which I seem to be missing more and more uh, by the day because of COVID, etc. Anyway, so welcome to the session. First of all, it's an honor for all of us here at Book Nerds to welcome you here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lot. Pleasure is all mine. And I, I must uh, uh, say one thing. When you said back in the day, you know, it can actually literally make sense because I started computer programming when I was in class six. I wow. had a computer at that time and uh, uh, by the time I reached class 12, I was selling software professionally. So I never went to a college. Wow. After 12, I got a job. And oh, wow. yes, you know, I have seen internet coming in. I have seen, <laughs> so I worked on DOS, the early versions. I worked wow. on GW Basic and uh, the OS that was before DOS when we used to work okay. on ZX Spectrum. Wow. Yeah. So I have seen Goodness. that journey. It's really back in the day. It's really back in the day. So <laughs> I, I wasn't wrong and I don't know you exactly. So I it was just a coincidence. But tell me something, heritage activist, you know, it sounds very kind of, it sounds brooding actually. It It's very, you know, kind of uh, that you are a serious guy. You have to do everything seriously. But let's break it down for everyone. First of all, talking about the books, uh, what is being a heritage activist like and what about the book? Why is Bowley's the first edition of, obviously, more editions to come? So here's the thing. Uh, heritage activist simply means who uh, uh, spreads awareness about heritage and wherever you need someone to stand up for uh, not just built heritage, but cultural heritage, we have natural heritage, wherever you need a person to understand and explain heritage. Or if there is something wrong happening, you need someone to fight for it. That's yeah. where an activist comes into picture. And that's what I have become uh, for okay. past 12 years now. And a yeah. uh, book on Bauli. So basically, this is a series called Delhi Heritage Top 10. Yeah. And the first one uh, in, the, in that series is on Bauli's, which you are holding in your hand. Yeah. Why Bauli? Because this is probably the most abused and forgotten structures that we have. Water. So water is something that we believe in. Human body, 70% water, planet, 70% water is everywhere. How much do you yeah. have to drink? Yeah. You know, so uh, uh, that's what I realized because uh, what I see around my, uh, you know, uh, uh, around my house, around my locality or wherever I go, one thing that we need most is air and water and both these things we are polluting. Yeah. Now, air, I was not able to bring in any huge architectural or archaeological element associated yeah. with air otherwise I, my next yeah. book would have been on that but water yeah. yes we are dangerously low on water especially in delhi so yeah. i thought that would be better to write on that yeah so uh, let's talk about delhi and it is mentioned in the book very clearly 
that the water table is kind of you know suffering and that it's has gone. been reported yeah it's gone you are saying that it's gone what are the measures that can be taken and then we'll delve into the bauli especially the uh, a very simple thing you know uh, even if you look in the book i've given a diagram where so when the water pours in uh, you know when there is rain yes. that rain water seeps into the ground and that recharges the water table uh, underground right. so i've yeah. got a, a diagram which explains yeah. how uh, water moves what is confined yeah. aquifers what is unconfined aquifer yeah. so that's yeah. the technical section of the book yeah. yeah but now just imagine we have got well carpeted roads concrete roads and when yeah. rain water falls on the, those roads it goes into those drains which are connected to bigger drains and then to the nalas and which all in case yeah. of delhi it falls into yamuna and in every city it has got similar story so we yeah. are not letting water through roads seep yeah. into the ground uh, yeah. we have got our buildings where on the roof when rain water falls everything yeah. goes into the drain and the same story continues yeah. so yeah. we are not letting our underwater table get recharged however uh, the all those minerals all those uh, other elements that are there underground they are at the same level and right. we are also uh, using bore pipes and tube wells and hand pumps and all kind of stuff to fetch yeah. water from underground so we right. are seeking water out we are not letting water in and whatever yeah. water there is is getting high concentration of the minerals uh beat sodium beat uh right. you know different like uh, we have got uh, sulfur in many parts of delhi yeah. we also have a gandaki bowl is one of the chapters in my yes. book because yes. that rock bed had sulfur and now yes. uh, that bowl has got its water back but it is it has got such high quantity of sulfur it's not good for anyone anymore yes. so there are health hazards you dangerous mean, health you hazards mean say, because of you mean to say yeah you mean to say that if the sulfur amount is too much then it it can't be you, you can't uh, bathe in it you can't use it anymore so or sulfur uh, is good for skin sulfur is never good for drinking because it has laxative effects so right. anyways you cannot drink it yeah. but it is good for skin but excess of everything is bad you can't even drink water in excess yeah, yeah. just imagine if i give you a particular element your body requires a certain amount of sodium right if i put four extra spoons of salt in your uh, 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 bowl of uh, lentils You yeah. know what will happen to you? Yeah, the body or people will shoot up or something. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so tell me something. I mean, uh, obviously, let's talk about the editor-author relationship because uh, it would be very important in this case. You have condensed the book so beautifully because this research seems like like it's a lot. Five years you have mentioned. Five years is a lot of time. So tell us a little actually, bit about that. So here's the thing. Um, uh during one of my walks and i don't do public walks many public walks i do like three or four walks a year not more than that other oh, than really? that i'm teaching into per oh, a year yes what oh, that's that's <laughs> like you you need to have a big ticket to attend those right, right? then <laughs> because, <laughs> because you know it's it's kind of you know because we also have walks here in doon uh, it's been there doon that i don't know if you are aware about that and uh, we have like public walks quite often but why why are you kind of you know uh, holding back on this see i need more time for research and neogi yeah. books is the reason i why i reduced my walks okay okay so what <laughs> happened uh, <laughs> what happened um we I, i was working on this and many people suggested me that i should write books and then uh, one day i met trisha and she said okay uh, we'll be publishing your book you tell me what you want to write on i said i've been thinking of doing a top 10 series and i want to start with bauli's she said okay fine when can you give the manuscript i said okay. i know all the bauli's there are 33 bauli's i know them by name and i have to write only about 10 maybe 3 right. months she said okay you can take 6 months give it to me <laughs> then it took 5 years i had wow. to learn a new language after that i learned urdu after that because yeah. i realized that the kind of stuff that i want to put in there i know those yeah. stories but how do i verify those stories how do i yeah. say with surety that if i am telling this this is the case and even today just 3 days back i have learned a new story about uh, something that i am going to put in my next book so every right. day i am learning something new and that's when i reduced my walks i confined myself to this cabin i have yeah. and yeah. this is loaded with books on all sides yeah. so i sit here i read most of the time goodness goodness so uh, i know it seems very easy once you are reading the book you know it's it's a very good experience and tell me something you are an it guy you know uh, all this has happened from last year you know everything has changed you know public walks etc it it's tough to you know execute uh, have you thought about kind of you know 
uh, innovating in this space, kind of going virtual in some ways? I have been doing that for last seven, eight years. Okay. So this was okay. nothing new for me. Okay. And I've, I've, done, I've done many sessions because at times people are not able to attend yeah. due to uh, physical constraints, logistic yeah. constraints and many other things. So yeah. I keep doing and plus I teach into universities and uh, many of my sessions, uh, they go online. And now since the lockdown has started, everything is virtual. So I already had a benefit from my because past experience. Actually, actually, what I meant was that, you know, the experience of experiencing Baulis, uh, you know, that experience. Uh, because not uh, many of the Baulis that you have mentioned are not accessible because of permissions issues. They are in a dilapidated state, etc., etc. Uh, can this happen? Like a virtual experience for people who can't... So I've done that people. also. I've done, I think one of my sessions is on YouTube also. Uh, what okay. I did, I've showed photographs and videos of that place. Yeah. And I yeah. also, uh, I, I have been consultant to many organizations who are working on AR and VR. Now yeah. in our case, VR works better. But then... Yeah. Uh, Creating a, a VR uh, experience for one monument is so expensive that they have so far been able to do for hardly 10 to 12 monuments and unfortunately no bowl is covered in that. But we, yes. I do have a VR experience from a, a, a German organization which they have done on Rani Kiva, Patan, Gujarat. Okay. Okay. So that I sometimes use in my classrooms and in my sessions. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully uh, we'll so be able to do for Delhi also. Yeah, I mean that that seems like the you know way forward i know it's expensive obviously and that's a major issue and we'll talk about it uh, later but tell me something um, when you visited the first bauli uh, what was uh, did you already know about them a lot what did surprise you uh, was there something that surprised you and uh, you know beyond that the first experience which is always special so it was 24th october 2009 it's that special oh. <laughs> i remember the uh -huh. date Nice. <laughs> um, I, I told my friend that let's go and explore Delhi and we have been exploring so many places. I At that time, I was in my IT job and I was um, heading Asia Pacific uh, division of uh, one of the top companies. So they sent me to Singapore and I saw everything and I was like, wow, they have got such less heritage and they have preserved it so well. I need to yeah. go back and check out Delhi. So yeah. I told my friend, uh, my, my colleague, let, let's step out. Let's go. Uh, we'll divide Delhi into four zones, north, south, okay. east, west, four Sundays. Okay. Each Sunday, we will check one zone and then we are done with Delhi. Next month onwards, we'll check out some other place. Okay. Uh, day one, I went to Meheroli and yeah. uh, saw Meheroli Ecological Park. I was so yeah. mesmerized. While going through that, uh, I reached Rajonki Bauli, which is in Meheroli Ecological Park. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that uh, was such an amazing experience. I think I even have a photograph somewhere where I'm standing and my friend clicked and I'm just looking down. It's four story deep step well. Yeah. And later while writing this book, when yeah. I read its actual story, when I did my research, I was yeah. so mesmerized because the person yeah. who invited Babur to India, he yeah. built that step well and he's buried over there. So his oh. tomb is over there. I've, I've got those photographs in my book. And okay. uh, when I say Rajon Ki Bauli, people think yeah. that probably it's uh, of some king. No, it's yeah. Rajon. Rajon means Raj Mitri. Karigaron Ki Bauli hai. Mistriyon Ki Bauli hai. Ah. So Rajon Ki Bauli and then uh, the person who is responsible for the Mughal dynasty, which became yeah. famous in the world, Mughal word yeah. became a dictionary word because of them. Yeah. So that person is buried in an unknown un, or rather an unmarked grave in one corner. Yeah. That for me was anyways a fascinating story. I would like to show everyone what he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, That's this, is, this is what he's talking about. And it's so beautiful. You know, it's, it's, I, I feel so cheated, you know, sometimes. Because as kids, we were just taught to go to Delhi and go to these three places. And, you know, that's about it. But, you know, this is so beautiful. Uh, tell me more about the Gandaki Bauli because, you know, it's, it's so quite unique. Gandaki, yeah, Gandaki Bauli is the oldest structure that we have in Delhi as far as a, a, a Bauli goes. We have one water structure before that that predates Gandaki Bauli, which is Anangtal. It's all dried up now. But in yeah. this particular case, it is one of the deepest structures and it's next to the Darga of Khwaja Kutubuddin Bakhtiar Kaki, built by yeah. Iltutmish. And yeah. since this was the first uh, step well that they were going to make, there is no concept of ornamentation or making it very beautiful. It's yeah. completely utilitarian. But when they yeah. dug up that structure and the story is that uh, uh, the king came to the Sufi saint, uh, Khwaja Kaki yeah. is the successor of uh, Monidin Chishti of Ajmer. 
and yeah. predecessor to baba farid and baba nizamuddin so hazrat yeah. nizamuddin only everybody knows yeah. uh, so when the emperor comes and uh, he learns that the so uh, the sufi saint doesn't have did not bathe because there is no water so he yeah. said okay i'll construct some construct a water structure which will help you bathe and coincidentally when they dug up that step well they found out that the water because it, it was smelling of sulfur so they found yeah. out that there is a sulfur rock that they pierced and yeah. there is very light quantity of sulfur which is very good for skin so yeah. ultimately this bauli always stayed as a bauli for bathing not for drinking Yeah. and another interesting thing associated with this one phenomena is that yeah. uh, uh, some 40 50 kilometers away from delhi we have uh, beyond gurgaon we have sona so we have sona yeah. road in gurgaon yeah. in sona we have a shiv temple shiv mandir yeah. Yeah. where we have uh, a hot spring yeah now hot spring can happen only if there is sulfur underground which means the sulfur rock yeah. that is there in delhi goes all the way via sona to yeah. other direction and over there the concentration is so high that water started boiling so we have been able to trace many such phenomena uh, in and around delhi because of these these things yeah it's it's fascinating stories you know it, it's so much history is there i mean you you must be you know um, exploring it and you know kind of coming coming across new stories every day and it is i feel that that is so amazing uh, tell us about the accessibility challenges because uh, you know with asi i don't know how they function but uh, Uh, how do you get to you know kind of write this book um, you know get permissions you know is it uh, is it something that stops you i mean delays it or it was smooth for you so here's the thing out of all the government organizations that i have worked with i have been consultant to many governments in india and even outside india many okay. state governments many city uh, municipalities Yeah, archaeological survey of india under central government is the easiest to work with trust me you just have to go and talk to them Wow. Okay, even in Dehradun, if you're sitting in Dehradun, just walk yeah. into their office, yeah. and just check out the name from the website. Who's the person? Go and say, I want to talk yeah. to that person. You'll be surprised. They'll invite you in. They'll offer you tea and biscuits, and oh, they'll oh, listen oh, to you. Know. And whatever help you need, the person will get them. And it doesn't matter which city you are in or which officer you are yeah. talking to. Entire yeah. archaeological survey of India is helpful. Yeah. People think that they are not helping. They just assume it. <laughs> so I have accessed uh, archives. I have I've spent. most of my research time in uh, asi library the central archaeological library and the uh, photo archives and the yeah. kind of collection that i have pulled out from there yeah. you know uh, they have got dozens of books on each zone each area so oh, no. delhi has like what 20 or 30 volumes huge books you just yeah. have to go through them hundreds and hundreds of photographs in each book each book each volume oh, wow. so it took me several months to go through them yeah and they have been so helpful in, at every stage so Yes, ASI is helpful. Getting permission is easy. The only problem is if you are going there for a pre-wedding shoot, probably then <laughs> they won't be very helpful. If you are going there for just I'm a tourist, I have the right, I have to go inside. They may not be very helpful with you, helpful for you. But if you say that I am a researcher, I want to study this, the person yeah. will walk with you passionately and explain you the place. Then there yeah. are no locks. They will open everything. You want to go on top of Kutub yeah. Minar? I have been on top of Hatepur Sikri Balan Darwaza. and that was one thing which i regret because i couldn't come back it was so tiring it's the tallest gate in india probably in the world of yeah, those please. times yeah. somehow i reached up and then i was lying like this i cannot get up now please tell someone me take me down tell me something because that that stair itself is so tiring you know <laughs> it is it is i have i have gone on top of so many monuments and it's so easy they just need to be sure that you are not having any vested interest or you are not going to use this for something commercial some commercial activity yeah. because there are laws and their yeah. job will be at stake if you you know shoot yeah. a movie in there and you don't tell them then yeah. their job will be at stake that's a challenge yeah. but if you yeah. are honest with them they are ready to help fair enough fair enough there is so much uh, conjecture over the pronunciation of this one uh agar sen ki bauli i think ki bauli you know there is a story yeah. you have told this so, uh, you know I have mentioned this in the chapter also in Guru Granth Sahib. Uh, Agrasen word appears, and uh, in the region of Delhi, the language that was that was spoken back then is the dialect that is used there in that chapter of Guru Granth Sahib also, where it say it talks about the four yogas and then goes ki satyuk te maniyo chaliyo bal bavan payo trete te maniyo Ram Raghuvans kahayo dwapar Krishna Murar Kanch Kirtarth kiyo 
उगर सैन को राज अब है पगताजन दियो सो उगर सैन इट्स रिटन विद ऊ प्लस देयर आर मेनी अदर बुक्स फॉर एग्जांपल दिस वन बुक बाय पिलारियन एंड न्योगी बुक पब्लिकेशन मैप्स ऑफ दिल्ली नाउ मैप्स ऑफ दिल्ली इन एवरी ओल्ड मैप दैट आई हैव रीड इन दिस बुक वेयर एवर अगर सैन की बाउल इज मेंशन इंटरेस्टिंगली इट इज विद अ डिफरेंट स्पेलिंग एवरी टाइम इवन इन इंग्लिश and yeah. when we write in urdu there is an option of writing zabar and pesh u ki matra and e ki matra yes yeah <coughs> i've seen uh, 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 many urdu records where they have used uh, urdu and persian records where they have used different spellings so yeah. pro- probably uh, there was a confusion uh, in the pronunciation or how uh, we have to yeah pronounce this name and locally people were using different different names and no it does not have any direct connection with maharaja agrasen Uh, because the bauli was probably built by agarwal community there is i, I don't yeah. doubt that but yeah. taking it all the way back to maharaja agrasen will be yeah. uh, <laughs> quite big yeah so, yeah great great i mean uh, that's again you know fascinating how pronunciations can change over periods you know it's uh, uh, while we're talking on that can i yeah. can i uh, share one more interesting anecdote about yeah, dehradun yeah. please yeah yeah so uh, the sixth sikh guru sent yeah. his son to aurangzeb who yeah. actually uh, does something which is not accepted in sikh community he showed some magic tricks for which he was expelled from the community though he was supposed to be the next guru but he was expelled from the community this person he came to doon valley and he started living there there okay. in punjabi we call it dera he yeah. made his dera over there yes. and when he died his dera was made so when a person yeah. dies dera what the, the memorial is called dera and when the yeah. person is alive it's called dera yeah so dera of baba ram rai is there yeah. that's how it becomes dehradun yes yes every place has a you know a story behind it true true so, yeah and and i would obviously when everything is like normal we would really hope that you come to dehradun and do one of those wonderful walks sure. along with the along with the local obviously heritage communities uh, and we would love to attend Uh, there are some not so famous uh, baulis uh, tell us about those and how difficult was it to place them because this is like not too big i mean uh, for example lohar uh, hedi lohar hedi ki bauli usko aapko dhoondna hi matlab mujhe lagta hai ki it must have been a tough job right yeah are wo mile 2012 mein that bauli was discovered in 2012 and that right. too when it had a huge apartment gangotri apartment right next to it so where the wall of the bauli ends from there the apartment wall starts yeah, yeah. on that wall only and when i yeah. reached there in 2012 that's the year when times of india one of the reporters i think richi verma was there she also reached there and she also reported uh, that bauli though okay. i had read about it in uh, old urdu records urdu uh, books that have not been translated yeah. yet Yeah. So I knew that something of that sort exists, but they mentioned that it is in Lohar Hedi village. Now where is Lohar Hedi village? We don't know. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, there is another case of Munirka Baul, which I've mentioned in my book also. Yeah. So Munirka, I went to Munirka, I kept exploring Munirka, I couldn't find find it. Yeah. Much later, I found out that Lohar Hedi, Ambar Hedi, Tehanpur were consumed when Dwarka was built, and okay. uh, Munirka was split into Munirka and R K Puram. So Munirka wow. Bauli, I found in R K Puram. and lohar hedi bauli i found in dwarka sector 11 ambar hedi bauli i have also found but it is now buried under a school there is a school and a college in dwarka oh, wow. under that oh, is the bauli oh goodness so oh, interestingly oh, time oh, i am also uh, teaching at nift delhi i'm one of the faculty members and uh, there is a place called kund and very okay. recently i uh, uh, was interacting with one of the architects who was working on it and he said that uh, there is a uh, some sort of document or some memorandum when government got uh, government gave this land to them they are yeah. not allowed to fill this portion so there is a depression right. which starts lead down and i was reading a record uh, from 1910 where it is said that there is supposed to be a bauli in this region okay khareda bauli now okay. the exact location is not given there is a possibility that this is the bauli or maybe it is a few feet away but yeah. the way it is built there is a possibility yeah. that that's the bauli and entire nift campus is on that oh goodness <laughs> wow. unless we excavated there is no way to confirm that yes yes it's so amazing um so tell me something i mean uh, you you have gone to all these baulis uh, uh, very objectively can you tell us like what are the top 3 in your regard it's just a personal uh, choice what about your favorites a 
love red fort bawli okay red fort bawli for multiple reasons uh, yeah. l shape structure very beautiful and it had acted as a prison for the soldiers of indian national army yes. and many of us we, we are you know emotionally connected to ina to subhash chandra bose and to whatever activities yeah. they did yes. uh, another interesting thing uh, lal kile se utthi awaaz sahgal dhillo shah nawaz so yeah. subhash chandra bose three general prem sahgal uh, shah nawaz and gurbakh singh tillo hindu a muslim and a sikh captured in that fort trying to fight for independent india where the british are trying to split india on basis yeah. of hindus and muslims dividing through the sikh line you know yeah. it's such a cult- cultural mix yeah. that we see over there and kind of conflicts yeah. so one is that i also like uh, uh, rajon ki bauli yeah. because uh, it's it's very beautiful ornate and i also lo- like uh, uh, kotla firosha's bauli the circular structure first chapter in my book because yeah. the way water management was done anyways we call firosha tugalak as uh, the uh, father of irrigation system of india and he has done a lot of work on the water management system in india but yeah. the way bauli is built right next to yamuna river and he has yeah. all those overflow channels inflow outflow well managed yeah. so yeah. i like uh, the technical aspect the civil engineering part of that oh wonderful uh, you are an it guy how can you know a civil <laughs> now i am sure that you know more about civil <laughs> no. how do you think i into 5 years why do you think of 5 years <laughs> wonderful and tell me something about the translations i am very intrigued because once you you walk into a library no worries chale gaye koi baat nahi uske baad the language you know most of these you know documents must be like so old i can't even imagine uh how to learn urdu at this stage it's very tough right urdu is easy if you are anywhere in north or central india urdu is very easy for you because we don't realize that we are speaking urdu when you say okay. imarat it's urdu yeah. yes having persian yeah. root when yeah. you say bangla kursi yeah, yeah. kitab these are all yeah. urdu words which came through arabic or persian into urdu right so practically what the language that we speak that that now yeah. loosely the linguist they call it hindustani yeah. has got 60 to 70 percent of Urdu in it. Right. The Urdu that went to Pakistan became more Persianized Urdu, and the right. Urdu that was left in India became more right. Hindi influenced Urdu. So that's right. the thing, but it's not difficult to learn once you know the script. Everything is easy. Yeah. And yes, uh, translations are horrible. You need to read the original manuscript. <laughs> Obviously. It changes everything. Uh, tell me something what are the things that really bug you you know uh, you you uh, go to these places like you know so often you know um t- tell us more i mean uh, what does really bug you from the public especially yeah the first and foremost one of the most frequent messages that i get especially when uh, you know talk about delhi yeah. is that why do you always talk about muslim monuments and my response to them is how can water be hindu or muslim <laughs> it's a step well and there is no way to return that only six or only muslims can fetch water from this well or step well however we do have cases where dalit or brahmin can do that that this well is for dalits and not brahmins but other than outside this uh, particular caste system no way yeah. in india i saw that that okay only uh, muslims are allowed to fetch water only yeah. hindus are allowed. so yes this religious element why do we force ourselves or the way we have been conditioned now that yeah. these are just muslim monuments we are not even supposed to look at them now that's not yeah. right and in, yeah. uh, you know if you, if you look at my instagram handle i have been sharing uh, photographs from all across india be temple gurudwara masjid church everything yeah. so yes i despite of that i get to hear a lot that you are favoring muslims one is that and another one is people don't read so, some of them read but they read only one book which is probably some religious book and they don't even understand that just they <laughs> read the cover and start shouting but then people don't read aapne bilkul aapne bilkul sahi aadmi se sawal kiya hai us so that that is obviously our wider vision to wo hota hai ki matlab padha hi nahi hai aur fir bhi chetan bhagat ko galiya de rahe hote hain aapko aapko pata hi nahi hai uski gehrai kya hai aur wo kis wajah se wo baatein kahi gayi ya kaise kahi gayi and even if you have read you have just read the synopsis of it आपने दो लाइन पढ़ी आपने पूरा चैप्टर नहीं पढ़ा बहुत बार क्या होता है कि यू नो इंडियन पोएट्री सच जिसमें जो उसका भाव अर्थ है वो अलग है शब्दार्थ अलग है वर्ड लिटरली मीन समथिंग एल्स बट द डेप्थ ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इज टोटली डिफरेंट चेंजेस द मीनिंग ऑल टूगेदर सो पीपल डोट एंड देन योर कमांड ऑन लैंग्वेज इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आई जस्ट गिव यू वन एग्जाम्पल 
there is a word so there are two letters in punjabi all languages p and t punjabi yeah. mein in dono ko saath mein aap rakho inke uh, jo matra hai unke permutation combination se kitne hi alag alag words bante hain pat yeah. patti तो सोनी महिवाल का किस्सा है से पट्टी खोल महिवाल ने पट दसे पट पाटे सन अख ना जाए पट्टी पिट पिट के होई बेहोश सोनी बन्ने कौन ते कौन बनाए पट्टी आई होश ते हो हैरान बोली केंदी कौन गया है पढ़ाए पट्टी पट होने ने चीर ले पट अपने ऐसे ले के सोनी भी जाए पट्टी और हर जगह पट का मतलब अलग है इसमें राइट तो लैंग्वेज इज वेरी पावरफुल अगर आपको उसकी गहराई नहीं पता तो ये सिर्फ एक ब्लैबर जैबर जिब्रिश था लेकिन अगर आपको इसकी गहराई पता है तो दिस वाज अ वेरी पावरफुल स्टेटमेंट या या सो एंड आई हैव गिवन अ वेरी ह्यूज स्टोरी इन 10 सेकंड्स या या ऑफ कोर्स एंड आई एम आई एम ग्लैड दैट आई वाज राइट दैट इट्स एन ऑनर फॉर अस टू हैव यू एंड अनजिप दिल्ली सेज दैट द बाउली एट पीर गालिब इज आल्सो वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पीर गायब पीर गायब ही सेइंग पीर गालिब एक्सीडेंटली पीर गायब है पीर गालिब ने वो ऑटो करेक्ट हो गया होगा पीर गायब बड़ा हिंदू राव हॉस्पिटल के अंदर जो बावली है तो पीर गायब तो नाम अब पड़ गया उसका बिल्डिंग का इट्स एन ऑब्जर्वेटरी ऑफ फिरोज शाह तुगलक और yeah. वो इसलिए इंटरेस्टिंग है क्योंकि उसमें टनल हुआ करती थी जो इस बावली से फिरोज शाह कोटला की बावली तक थी और अंग्रेजों yeah. ने जब इस टनल को देखा तो मेरे पास पुराने रिकॉर्ड है फरिश्ता के हैं कहीं के जिन्होंने उस बावली को डिस्क्राइब किया टनल को डिस्क्राइब किया आईने yeah. अकबरी में अकबर के टाइम तो उस टनल को डिस्क्राइब किया गया अंग्रेजों ने बाकायदा उसमें घुस के उसको क्लीन किया और उसके अंदर तक गए ना गिवन द डिस्क्रिप्शन साइज yeah. वगैरह सब उन्होंने देखा कहाँ कहाँ वेंटिलेशन शाफ्ट बनी हुई है उसके अंदर और एक पॉइंट पे जाके वो घबरा गए कि ये कहीं कलैप्स ही ना कर जाए तो उन्होंने मिट्टी डाल के वो पूरी टनल बंद कर दी बट कितने किलोमीटर लंबी टनल एग्जिस्ट करती है अगर वो फिर से क्लीन की जाए तो गवर्नमेंट लेफ्टिनेंट गवर्नमेंट घर के पास से निकलेगी सो बी वेरी केयरफुल लॉट ऑफ पीपल ऑल दो आई डेंट वॉन्ट टू मैं बट आई कांट हेल्प इट अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल थिंक दैट दीज मोनुमेंट यू नो कुछ मतलब यहाँ पे मतलब पैरानॉर्मल होता है और ये ऑड आर्स में जाओगे तो ये हो जाएगा हैव यू एनकाउंटर्ड समथिंग लाइक दिस और जस्ट मिथ्स ही हैं बस ये डर किसने फैलाया है अभी आप जहां बैठे हैं लाइट बंद कर दीजिए पांच मिनट में यहाँ पे डर लगने सो इट समथिंग हियर यू नीड टू कंट्रोल इट एंड यस ऑल आर मॉडर्न डे ब्लॉगर्स एंड ब्लॉगर्स <laughs> they need more likes so you know these kind of stories kind of attract people yeah uh, paranormal stories i have i had my own kind of experiences i'll not deny that but yeah. then i would also say that they were not scary yes there yeah. are several phenomena which i have never been able to explain how yeah. they happened why they happened and then i had to accept that there is something beyond explanation or at least yeah. beyond my understanding there may be yeah. people who would understand that so i won't yeah. deny anything but yeah. there is nothing to be scared of To yeah. run away from. I mean, enjoyed all those phenomena. Yeah. Tell me something. Being an act, heritage activist, you know, you educate people also, uh, kids also. Uh, are you involved at school level also? Is it great? So uh, that's such an amazing thing. Um, I don't know if I should ask this, but uh, anything that you know uh, might bug you on that count that. Schools, कितना seriously उस चीज को लेते हैं. Maybe in Delhi, it's kind of easier. I don't know. I don't know. टीचर ही कर लेगी become a science teacher yeah science and math uske yeah. baad karte karte acha ye nahi aata to ye ban jao ye nahi aata karte karte yeah. social science fir yeah. arts hmm. fir sports matlab aapne criteria hi aisa rakha hai ki agar aapko kuch nahi aata history padha lo oh this, yeah i have seen this happening yeah. in schools i've seen this happening and do other the schools also why do we need you our history teacher will do it are history teacher ko to pehle hi aapne aise chun ke rakha hai jo kuch nahi kar pa raha ya kar pa rahe so yes there are such cases and i've seen yeah. that uh, we made history so boring because we start with in the year so and so he came he killed why am i bothered if akbar killed shah jahan or maybe prithviraj chauhan kon hai bhai ye naam kon tha kidhar kya maar raha hai mujhe kyu bata rahe ho i am a pilot mujhe jahaz uda raha hai main ye thodi sochunga ki idhar babar ke makkare ki taraf modne ke akbar ke mazar ki taraf mujhe to apna runway dekhna hai so we have made history so boring for these kids 
दे आर स्केयर्ड ऑफ हिस्ट्री जबकि हिस्ट्री बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग है इतनी बोरिंग है yeah so i i feel that you need to create more like you obviously i am i'm sure that you must be mentoring people as well uh, and that's uh, so that that would be great uh, but we need a huge change obviously i mean it it is required in both history and books and in literature so it's we hmm. are kind of on the same plane but uh, i'm so happy that you're working hard at it and you know you know uh, you are totally committed to this uh, tell me uh, that Oh, being a educator, heritage heritage activist, it's fine. But when you're writing a book, and this is my final question, uh, what were the challenges you were facing? Because uh, were you writing a lot before this? What was happening there? Um, no, I was not writing a lot. Though I had a had my blog, and from last two years, I'm not added even a single article to that blog. Yeah. Because uh, when I was writing, I realized that uh, uh, when I was writing blogs early yeah. days. all i was yes. doing was i was getting information from uh, internet here and there different blogs wikipedia yeah. blah blah and i was yeah. writing my own article and yeah. i realized later that this is the biggest mistake that i'm doing yeah. i need to read authentic sources i need to read first hand accounts and that's yeah. when i picked up all those uh, books from uh, archaeological library and from archives spent time at national archives and asi and igncl library manuscript divisions and all yeah. and totally different stories came up name of the place everything for example there is a place called siri fort in delhi yes now for siri fort the most popular story is that uh, alauddin khilji beheaded 8000 mongol soldiers and hung yes. their heads on this wall and yes. head since it's called sir so yes. the wall became siri siri fort yes. now i was i was reading uh, uh, tarikh e firosh shahi yeah abhi recently complete kar raha hu so that's the manuscript i have Ziauddin Barni wali tarikh e Firosh hai hai and this is the original uh, facsimile of the original manuscript which is in Rampur Raza library so i'm not yeah. reading a translation i'm reading the asli wala mal oh is mein hai ki jaise hi Alauddin Khilji pehli baar delhi aata hai to Siri naam ke gaon mein wo thehrta hai aur abhi wo 10 15 saal ke baad Siri fort banayega तो सिरी नाम 15 साल पहले एग्जिस्ट करता है जब मंगोल्स ने अटैक नहीं किया और मंगोल्स को हर जगह मुगल लिखा गया सो so, मंगोल्स yeah. को यहाँ पर मुगल बोला जाता था सो so, जो मुगल डायनेस्टी हम समझते हैं दैट इज डिफरेंट द मुगल्स हैव बीन अटैकिंग ड्यूरिंग खिलजी एंड प्री खिलजी टाइम्स एंड देन एट सिरी ही इन कैम्प बट द बैटल वॉज नेवर फॉट एट सिरी तो 8000 सर काट के यहाँ टांगने का कोई मतलब ही नहीं बनता सो दैट एंटायर थिंग दिल्ली में जितने हिस्टोरियंस हैं वो घूम के वॉक्स करा रहे हैं वो यही स्टोरी सुना रहे हैं क्योंकि तो किसी ने विकीपीडिया पे लिख दिया वहां से कॉपी करके दस ब्लॉग्स पे आ गया Yeah. मैं आज तक विकी मैंने विकीपीडिया को दो तीन बार करेक्ट करने की कोशिश किया फॉर वन थिंग इट्स मेंशन कुतुब मीनार इज द टॉलेस्ट ब्रिक मीनार इन दी वर्ल्ड इट्स रॉन्ग देर इज नॉट इवन अ सिंगल ब्रिक यूज्ड इन कुतुब मीनार इट्स रबल मेसनरी देर इज अ बिग डिफरेंस बिटवीन ब्रिक्स एंड रबल और जब मैं ठीक करने गया तो मेरे को मॉडरेटर uh, uh, का कमेंट क्या आता है दैट वी हैव चेक एल्सवेयर एवरीवेयर इट इज मेंशन ब्रिक मीनार सो यू आर रॉन्ग He did work for ASI. I was I I documented Kutub complex for ASI. I yeah. know what is there inside. मैं अंदर घूम घूम कर उन्होंने मुझे कि कोना दिखाया खुद अपने साथ मैंने photo documentation की उसकी. I know this is wrong, but नहीं कोई नहीं मानता उसको. So, so yeah. हमने झूठ को इतनी बार बोल दिया कि वो सच हो गया. So I mean obviously um, we have to, you guys you have to go and check this out. This is just mind boggling. You you will not regret it. uh the illustrations are one the especially the book cover illustration is wonderful i think it's done by uh, a girl called nupur my, father. my yeah, father. cover illustration is by my father oh goodness he's an artist oh, talent in the family wonderful uncle ji awesome job awesome job on this uh, so if you are watching this is just amazing and you know it couldn't have been better let me tell you so yeah i just wanted to compliment you on this and obviously the inside uh, you have to check it out i i just pick it up from amazon obviously leave a review uh, vikram jeet is available on instagram uh, youtube i checked out out your youtube channel it has got if you want to know more about paulis there is an entire session 1.5 ghante ka session yahi hai matlab to aap ja ke check karo to mere ko to bahut help hui usse so maine pehle hi usko dekh liya tha thank you so much vikram jeet it's uh, i'm i can't repeat it more i mean i'm so inspired by you and to work harder uh, to uh, work harder for a cause uh, you know 
uh, spend all our energy also at something which we are passionate about this is the common thread which uh, i suppose i what i got out of the session so i, I it's wonderful to have you here we are looking forward to the other ones uh, what are those so next one is on forts of delhi yeah already done the manuscript is week bhej raha hu finalize kar raha hu manuscript mein and then yeah. next one i am going to write on uh, monument, uh, monument complexes of delhi where yeah. a single enclosure has got multiple monuments from different periods and how right. are they interrelated and how they fall in a different in a, in a single enclosure wonderful so right yeah. yeah to ja ke jaldi se you know follow vikram jeet on instagram you won't regret it a lot of great pictures and you know information that you you can't find it anywhere else so just find it there and thank you again uh, niyogi books for doing this because it takes a vision to do this as well thank you so much vikram ji thank you so much for having me thank you thank you thank bye you.